Pettigrew tried to study it, the Dr. Pettigrew, he couldn't figure it out. And I looked through the books, the books that are right now current on heart research, they don't know either. But they do know they do it. So I thought, why don't I just take the idea I had about the, the cones and put it together? And I did. And I realized that uh, the cone is layered, so it means part of it is going underneath. So what I did is I took two cones. I made two cones. Got a paper clip here, take it off. I put them together, like this. So this is what I found out. If I take this, uh, this is my original form, and I may not be able to get it right, and I don't need to see my paper clips, but uh, at least I have one. Let's see. <coughs> Paper clip towel? Okay. All right. uh, that's good, because that'll be on my second one. So I twist this until they make a cone. I made a cone, and I have to make sure that when I put this together, that it's lawful, that it's not based on some kind of thing I want to prove, because that's what I want to do. i got to find that cone. Oh, you know, that's, that's another one of my experiments. It didn't work. Um, I had a plastic cone. Oh, thank you very much. Man, it's very helpful. <laughs> I made sure that's the right one. You know, you have to make sure that what you do is correct. So you have to make sure that that cone was really the size of the real cone. So what I did was I twisted it around like this. You know, until I came together with the very beginning of the edge of the cone. So now I have four and a half cones yeah, right there. So then I did the same thing on this side. I decided that I put these together and that's why the paper clip would be great for the pair. Mm -hmm. The original ones, and the, the reason I haven't changed them is because I've just been working on other stuff. Uh, but if I put it together, which this has just really excited me for a month, now that cone is going again. Over here. On the oh table. Yeah. <laughs> I should make it out of red or something. <laughs> so make sure again that it's the right size. And then I decided that I would put this together like this. Oops, came off. I would put this together to meet my other one here. So I got the other one still over here. I take this around like this. Let's hope I do this right. And when I came all the way around here, no, it's not right. I think it needs to be on the other side, like this. Can you hold that one cone for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. This is, works better with four hands. <laughs> Three hands. All right, let's hope that I can do this, because this is really something. If I can show you this. If I twist this around and make it into a cone, too, which is kind of bends up, but, you know, it has to be kind of paper to be thin like this. And I roll it around. Let's see if I'm going to get this right or not. If I don't, I'll just do it again. But it's important to see this because this is coming off of research that's based on there. So here it goes. Now they meet. Now they're both four and a half. They meet right in the middle. They broke four and a half. Well, sure, that's not very good because I have two separate cones that are connected. That's not the work. It doesn't work. Another failure. But then I was studying shells. And I watched what the right hand and the left hand shells do. And I realized that, well, why don't I just do what the shells did? And instead of doing this, I just continued wrapping this around. You can go either way. I just continued wrapping it around, one around the other, until it came to the very end. And when it came to the very end, I still had this one cone here. Kind of getting more stuff, but that's all right. I came to the end, and there was now eight layers and one. What do I do with this one? All I have to do is pull it there, and what do I have? I have the right and left ventricle. This is the vortex that's being pushed off to the side. So what I did was to find out if this would work out with this layering. So here's the layering going this way. I'm going to unfold it. 
it starts to flatten out. It does. It's now going horizontal, which is what the heart does. And then it should reverse and go the other direction, and it does. And that is how the human heart is developed on two vortexes and how those muscles reverse. All over the piece of paper. <laughs> Putting them both together, the inside and the outside, this is what they look like with geometry. But I had to make the geometry move because what I found is that the heart moves on the outside, okay, and only a little bit. And I found out that the cube is the limiting amount. So if I move the geometry, sometimes this gets stuck, but if I move the geometry, it will move only a little bit. It will twist a little bit like that. You see it twist? But the inside doesn't do that. The outside goes like this, but the inside goes like this. So how is that going to make the inside twist and the outside just go like that? Well, I went back to my models and I got uh, O-rings and all kinds of stuff and I made this model. And this model right here shows the outside and the inside filled with blood. Now it's emptying. Now when it empties, the inside's got a twist. And it does. It twists like that and it opens up and fills. It fills, empties. And then fills again. And then twists and empties. This is how the inside geometrically works in the human heart. And it moves 40 degrees. It only moves 40 degrees and then it stops about right there. Right there. It stops. And I know it's 40 degrees because I can measure it. And I also look in the medical books and they say, documented, that it only moves 40 degrees. If I can move this another 5 degrees, what happens at the bottom is you now have a fifth chamber in the heart. Mm -hmm. There is a fifth chamber in the heart that's come in here, right there. It even has a new valve. It has a tricuspid valve right there. That is the fifth chamber that Pfeiffer is talking about in Ross Steiner. All we have to do is to move our hearts about five more degrees, and this will happen. And this will allow the etheric, this will allow the etherization of the blood to start to go up, all right, to the pituitary and the pineal gland, not through meditation on some kind of light going up there, but by the transformation of our heart, not sitting in the corner thinking about the light. Okay. but actually working in the world, okay, trying to get a more flexible heart, trying to get a heart that can move more, trying to be more open to the next person, okay, and be more heart-oriented, okay, not based on fantasy, but based on the geometry that's showing that when you twist the heart five more degrees, a new chamber comes about. So I'm going to try to catch this uh, up, PBT up a little bit. I've got a few minutes, according to... Gordon, so let's see, I'm going to move pretty quick here and show you other images. This is showing the tube spinning and the motion. This is the geometry of it, how I make sure that it's lawful. Uh, here's the inside of the heart. You put it, here's the uh, inside of the heart that I did in the uh, artistic side through a bubble. And there's the geometry. And you notice that there is a 